The Quebec Bridge disaster began with an idea for a bridge that would span across the St. Lawrence River. The bridge was intended to spike business traffic in Quebec City. It was originally proposed by the Quebec Bridge Company in the year 1900, and they began gathering funds for the project from Phoenix Bridge Company. A well-renowned engineer from New York City named Theodore Cooper was selected to manage the bridge construction. So in 1903, some of the first meetings began to take place where the overall design was considered and the span and weight calculations were made. In the year 1905, the final drafts of the bridge were completed and the actual construction of the bridge commences. In 1907, on August 29th, at around 5.30 p.m., the bridge collapses. So during the construction, a number of problems were discovered by Cooper. Firstly, the cantilever bridge design was selected in order to cut the cost of construction as this was seen as the most cost-effective option. On top of that, the span of the bridge was increased from 490 to 550 meters to allow for a smaller number of piers to be constructed. Cooper then found that the bridge weight was off by 8 million pounds and the girder's alignment was off by a quarter inch. Some of the options he had was to redesign the structure entirely or move forward despite the risk. During the disaster itself, a number of events took place. Firstly, in June, it was discovered that the girders were misaligned. Cooper was informed of this, but he chose to disregard this information as he seen it unimportant. A young engineer named Norman McClure informed Cooper on August 6th that the lower cords of the south arm were bent. He then later reported that two more cords were bent on August 12th, but the chief engineer, John Deans, decided that the work must continue. The deflection has grown even more on August 27th when McClure measured the bent again and informed Cooper. Cooper informed the bridge company in Pennsylvania to place no more load on the bridge until all facts were considered. Deans ignored Cooper's instruction and on August 29th the bridge collapsed killing 75 workers out of the 86. Looking at this event in terms of tort law shows that the QBRC were required to provide a duty of care to the plaintiff, which meant a safe environment for the employees to be working under. Due to the bridge collapsing, they failed to provide this duty of care towards the plaintiff, which in turn led to the death and injuries of the majority of workers on the bridge. The defendants of this case are listed as Theodore Cooper, Peter Slepsa, and Yenser Phoenix Bridge Company. The plaintiffs con consisted of the workers themselves, as well as the friends and families of the workers affected. On one case similar to this situation is the Winnipeg vs. Bird case, in which Bird Construction built a condo that contained a flaw in its design and was sold to Winnipeg condos without knowledge of the benign flaw at the time. After, some after time, some cladding fell off the ninth floor of the condo, which affected the people living inside. Bird Construction failed to provide a duty of care to the subs subsequent buyers, which led to the severe damage control for Winnipeg condos. Theodore was liable for poor management and pri prioritization of money over safety for the public, while Peter Slapsa was liable for the poor design led by his miscalculations. Finally, John Dean was liable for his ignorance to the signs of failure pointed out to him and his neglect towards public welfare. This disaster resulted in the death of 87% of workers on site and cost $1.5 million to repair these damages. It also caused a deficit of possible businesses for companies around the area that planned to use this bridge for transport and in general caused grief and financial instability for the families affected by the collapse. Looking at the ethical issues, we use the ICAD method, which is to find the ethical problems, generate possible solutions, analyze its solution, and then come up with its leading decision, decision. So we refer to section 72, which was professional misconduct and section 77 which is code of ethics. So under professional misconduct, Cooper and Zlipak provided us section 72.2.A, section 72.2.B, section 72.2.C by first negligence and then failure to report a situation which was endangering the public. The bridge construction company violated section 72.2.D by not stopping work, even though the work they were doing was endangering the public. And Cooper then violated section 72.2.J by not supervising the work done on the site by himself. This was considered unprofessional. 
in Code of Ethics, Football violated Section 77.1.i and Section 77.1.ii by showing lack of fairness and loyalty to his associates, employees, clients, and subordinates, and by showing lack of fidelity to public needs. Section 77.1.ii and Section 72, 77.2.i were violated by going ahead with construction even though there were miscalculations and underestimation of deadlocks. Cooper then violated section 77.7.i by not showing good faith when he came under scrutiny by a government agent. So we generated five possible solutions. First was to do nothing. Second was to refuse to continue the work due to unsafe conditions. Third was to leak information to public to prevent further construction. Fourth was to report concerns and issues. Fifth was to work it was to whistleblow to OIQ. Doing nothing violates professional misconduct, which can lead to loss of license. Refusal to do work violates multiple sections of code of ethics. And leaking information to public violates multiple sections of code of ethics, as well as sections of professional misconduct. Doing whistle to the OIQ violates section 77.1.i. So the best decision we came up with was for Cooper and Starpark to take up the issue with the higher authority in the company and if that doesn't work then go ahead and report the issue to OIQ. Thank you.